hundred bucks a plate that cannot pour a decent cup of coffee. Oh, you and your refined palate for gourmet coffee. Coffee is coffee already. Right here. Take a sip of that and tell me it doesn't taste like garbage. I don't even know what garbage is supposed to taste like. It's gonna taste like that cough. Shut up. But I have smelled garbage, and I'll tell you what. This here coffee, it smells like coffee. What do you say? Let's do this thing, huh? I'm hearing word on the street that uh, someone lifted some jewelry from that heist that went down at the airport the other day. You know anything about that? I don't know nothing. Don't about lie to me like I'm Judge Judy. <laughs> Young people today take no responsibility. It's the decline of the two-parent household. What are you talking about? My old man left for good when I was 10 years old, and I turned out fine. This kid's just a punk. Okay. 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 I left it a couple of necklaces, but I still got him. I swear. I got a buddy. He owns a Haji Mart. He, he's keeping him in the safe. All right. You're taking us there. I don't want no more uh, little fandangos here, huh? Wrap up our package real nice. With what? What do I care with what? Rope, chain, whatever you got. What is coming bun? I ain't got nothing. I don't, hey, I ain't got nothing either. You just told us about this five minutes. It's nothing on, but if you had it told us, then, you know. I'll send you an email next time. We're in a, a commercial establishment, right? Yeah. Find a utility closet. They got rope, string, floss. I don't care. Just get it done. So I think you can Carlo, love you. The eyes, the hair. Hey, Carmine, where you been? What do you care? You've been talking to your friends all day. <laughs> Who is it this week? Oh, Gina. Ha, it's Connie Todaro's sister, isn't it? Angel. Beans. I don't want to disturb you if you're having your own. No, no, no. Um, hey, uh, give us a minute, will you? Please. Go ahead. Mm. Look at this. I got a plate full of gravy and no macaroni. <laughs> That's how they do it now. My wife's idea. Low carb diet. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I tell you, ever meet this Dr. Atkins, I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> <sighs> so, how's that thing? Uh, the thing is good. We are actually taking care of it as we speak. Good. Good, good. Now, listen, Beans. Not for nothing, but, uh, you know, I think you're racist. Huh? One of my best earners. Thanks, Angelo. You know, I, I always saw you as kind of a father to me, you know? That's why I want you to hear it from me first. I'm making Mickey Valletti the new captain. That's, uh... Good. Mickey's good people. I knew I could count on your support. Yeah. Well, you're like a father to me. I'm gonna go take care of that thing now. Mm -hmm. Enjoy your meat, that means. Hey, I found some duct tape. I said to make sure he doesn't go anywhere, not wrap him up like a Cuban cigar. You should wrap the package. It was a figure of speech, you idiot! Why is he in his underwear? Hey, the Tux has got to be back by 6. He used his mom's credit card. I don't want to see her get stuck with the late charges, so I told him I'd drop it off on the way. It's no big deal. We're going to kidnap him and then make some stops along the way. Brilliant. How are you going to get him out of here? How, how can he even walk looking like a mummy? Well, we can hop, but Hey, show the man you can hop. Come on, hop up and down. Hop up and down or I'll stab you right in the leg. I mean it. <laughs> he can hop.
We got Carmine the Beans Pasquale and his crew with Jimmy Amoroso in the trunk, wrapped up like a wedding present. I think we're the ones that just got a great big gift. Attention, crappy mod shoppers. Store's closed. Oh, what is this? It's just closing time. You, let's go. I'm buying my smokes. Smoking to kill you. And so will I if you don't get out of here and not beat it. What's going on? Where's the safe? What's up? You robbing me? No. The robin's already been done. We're here to take back what is rightfully ours. Jimmy, I thought you told me those were gifts for your old lady. Safe. Let's go. Yo, I want you guys to know, I don't have nothing to do with any of this. Assalamu alaikum. I'm just doing my part to reach out. But a bingo! Okay. We're not doing nothing. All right. Okay. Look, Carmine. Kidnapping, accessory to a jewelry heist. Couple that with your rap sheet. You're looking at 20 years. 25. Unless you want to play ball. I could do 20 years standing on my head, boys. As I'm sure you could. <laughs> you know, Carmen, I gotta be honest. <laughs> We're amazed that you slipped like this. It's devastating. Tragic. But if Angela Marcello is worried that you're gonna talk, he might hear that you're upset about getting passed over for your promotion. You know how those rumors start flying? Like rockets. Straight to the moon. You guys take your little show on the road? Yeah, you like you go to high schools, keep kids off drugs, because your little puppet show, very entertaining. Yeah. Who do you think is pulling the strings? Clearly, Angelo Marcello is pulling the strings. And if he thinks that you're talking, you're going to be doing a lot more time six feet under. <laughs> <laughs> unless, unless, I'm just thinking out loud here, but um, unless you actually do talk, <laughs> Then we can at least help you out. Six accused members of the Marcello crime family, including mafia boss Angelo Marcello, were found guilty today of 12 counts of extortion and racketeering. Prosecutors credited the victory to testimony of longtime Marcello crime family member Carmine the Beans Pasquale. Pasquale is now believed to have entered the federal witness protection program. Let's go live. Not being able to see her great-grandson no more? Grandma Florentino was going to be heartbroken. Oh, please. When she came over from the old country, the, the statue said, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses. You know why they were huddled? Because she was beating the crap out of everybody all the time with that wooden spoon. You know what, Carmine? The place may change, but you will always be a jerk. <sighs> will you guys shut up? Oh! You do not talk to me like that. See this? You know what this is? Rap. Music. It breeds disrespect like a fungus. And what, and what, what, what the names these guys have? What, uh, 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 Slim Shady Puff Daddy? What is that? He goes by P. Diddy for short. For short? Why, because it takes all day to say Puff? Oh, I'm exhausted. I need a nap. Hey, hey, look who's talking about names. They call you Carmine the Beans. Yes, because I grind my own beans for coffee. A nickname has to be married to the guy that's... What do you want? You're no longer known as Carmine the Beans. You know, George Linda and Patrick Cheeseman. Cheeseman? What is that, French? Who's Patrick and who's George? Because I ain't no George. Yeah, well, I ain't no George either. I think Linda's a beautiful name. I always said I wish my mother had named me Linda. She should have named you Chatty Cathy. Will you just zip it? Well, I ain't no Patrick. Because they call you Pat for short, and Pat is a girl's name, and I ain't no name that goes both ways. Look, we have driver's licenses, birth certificates, bank cards, social security cards, and supermarket rewards cards. And they're all made out to George, Linda, and Patrick Cheeseman. Well, then I'm going by Rick, because I ain't no Pat. So, Agent Banks, where are we moving to? Special Agent Tuttle. Welcome to Utah. Okay. The arrangements have been made for you guys to stay in a hotel tonight. We'll take you to your house tomorrow and also provide you with a vehicle. Hey, uh, how many wives you got? Just one. What, you're not a Mormon? 
Well, I am, but the Mormon Church hasn't practiced polygamy in over 100 years. It's the offshoot groups that still have plural wives. You would have to shoot me. Having one wife is bad enough. Be nice to have more than one. Give me a break from you. Okay, I'm gonna grab Want your bags. We're actually Take right out here. Fine. Go ahead. See ya. Find me somebody else. Preferably someone without a mustache and a bad attitude. You know, this place looks like a whole lot of nothing. You know, actually, it was a desert wasteland when the Mormon pioneers arrived in July of 1847, but under the leadership of President Brigham Young, the entire area... What, do you work for the National Park Service or the FBI? Just drive the van, okay, G-Man? Don't worry, Patrick. There's a lot to it's do... It's Rick. Rick, there's a lot to do in Utah, and there's a lot to do just a day's drive from here. We've, uh, we've got the Grand Canyon. There's Hollywood. Disneyland. <laughs> Disneyland. My old man promised to take me to Disneyland. And you know what he did? He took off and he never came back. And I haven't had too much of a desire to visit there ever since. I'm afraid it'll bring up too much repressed anger. Yeah, so take a Prozac like a normal person. So what's the neighborhood we're moving into like? Happy are we? Happy are we? Soldiers in the army, there's a bright brown sword. We shall win and wear it by and by. I just received a page. I have a family emergency. Uh, we'd like to excuse uh, Bishop Harrison, who's had to attend to uh, a very important uh, family matter. Our concluding speaker will be uh, Brother Chris Moore. Brother Moore. It's okay. Hang on, Brother Moore. Let me just try to get this a little higher for you here. Brothers and sisters, I'm grateful for the opportunity to stand before you this day. Brothers and sisters, thank you. Sorry to hear about Bishop Harrison's dad. When are they leaving for the funeral? First thing in the morning. They're pretty worried about how his mom's going to handle the farm alone. He'll be gone three to four weeks to just sort things out. With the bishop gone, does that mean we won't have church? <laughs> no, no, sweetie. Um, with the bishop gone, your daddy's first counselor to the bishop, and he'll be in charge for a few weeks. Well, he certainly had things under control today, didn't he? Uh, thanks for the support there, Jules. Anytime, bro. Thanks. Exactly when are your parents getting back from the Philippines? Two years, ten months. What, do you got a countdown? Technically, Dad, she is my aunt, but I despise her like a sister. Hey, look, there's a sold sign on Hooper House. When did that happen? I don't know. Hmm. Place has been vacant for a while. Be nice to finally have someone in there, though. He had eight stitches. Yes, I just got off the phone with his wife. Yeah, and with Bishop Harrison gone for who knows how long, the inmates are running the asylum, if you can believe it. Michael James in charge, please. Mom? Uh-huh. Huh? Sir Johnson's on the phone. Hold on, Robin. Mary Jo, did you hear? Eight stitches. What? Are you sure? When? Run down to the, uh... Hooper's old house and see if there's a sold sign on it. Mm. Just do it. I wonder who's moving in. This place is a shoebox. It's a great house, George. <laughs> hey, we got a satellite, right? Well, actually, we'll cover the house, but the amenities are extra. The government pays three grand for a military toilet seat and you can't pop for HBO? Come on! I can't believe we got no satellite. Why didn't you just send us to live with the Amish? Because they sent us to live with the Mormons. Yeah, same difference. You know, honestly, no, it's not. Right, because the Amish wear black shirts and ride around on horse and buggies, and the Mormons wear white shirts and ride bikes. Completely different. Okay. All right, look, George. I hate that name. Mr. Cheeseman. Worse. A couple of things. This right here is your first month stipend. Now, you get a few more of those until you can get a job and you actually get on your feet. And what am I supposed to do for a ride? Well, actually, you'll get that red minivan out front. 
Are you kidding me? I think it's real cute. You would. You were driving an AMC Pacer when I met you. Yeah, I love that car. I was heartbroken when it got stolen. <laughs> you still think it got stolen? I paid Booch 20 bucks to drive it into the Delaware River. You what? what? What are you complaining for? I bought your brand new IROC Z. Oh! Hi, I'm Chris Moore. These clowns are stealing my stuff! We're your neighbors. We're just here to help. Oh. Don't break nothing. You know, George, you're gonna have to understand that people here are a lot friendlier than what you're normally used to. Yeah, we've been here two whole days and not one person has flipped us the bird. I don't want friendly. I just want to be left alone. wanted to come by, welcome you to the neighborhood. Thank you. Please come in. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, I'm Louise Means. I'm Linda Cheeseman. This is my husband, George. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you, George. Oh, these are for you. Thank <laughs> you. Have a seat. Oh, thanks. So, where did you move from? Omaha, Nebraska. You seem to have a slight eastern accent. We're from the eastern side. So, anything you want to know about the neighborhood or the neighbors? I got a question. You're not going to come knocking on my door at 8 o'clock Saturday morning, are you? Why would somebody want to do that? Come on. I know you people. It's what you do. You go door to door, knock, 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 talking to people, preaching your Mormon Bible. Meanwhile, all of us inside are staying down, trying not to make a freaking noise so you think we're not home and go away. So, you're not members. Members of what? Louise hasn't wasted any time burning up the phone lines, letting people know they're not members of the church. Uh. I just hope she hasn't offended them. Well, you know, we'll do a little damage control. We'll uh, show them that the rest of us are just regular, normal people. <laughs> um, we can see you've got a lot of unpacking to do. Um, so we didn't want to intrude. We just wanted to come over and introduce ourselves, say hello. No, it's no intrusion. No, it's very nice to use. Can we get you something to drink? Oh, no, no, we didn't want to keep you that long. No, let us get to something. Okay, great, thank you. I don't get your beer. Uh, no, that's okay. Well, you said it was okay. Right, I, I did. Uh, just no beer. All right, whatever. How about you, Toots? Um, no, no, I'm fine, thanks. What are you thinking? She's not going to be drinking while she's pregnant. Why not? You did. Actually, we don't drink at all alcohol. Is that a Mormon thing? Yes. We don't drink alcohol. Okay, well, we got coffee. <laughs> Just that freeze-dried sewer water that you buy. Hey, what? Uh, that website, I would get my imported coffee from. You know what that was called? I don't know. Yeah, I'll Google it. It's okay, because we, uh, <laughs> we don't drink coffee either. <laughs> Fine. We'll go to the kitty menu. I'll get you a Coke, I'll get you a Diet Coke, honey. <laughs> You're not going to believe this. Um, <laughs> there's some members of our church that um, choose to drink cold drinks, but Michael and I, we happen to not drink cold drinks. Yeah. What do you do for liquid refreshment? What, are your mother still nursing you? Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Well, good night. Good night. Nice to meet you. Thanks, you too. too. <laughs> Bye-bye. That was interesting. Yep. Uh, hello, ma'am. Uh, I'm Rick Cheeseman. We just moved in down the street. Uh, I'm Blanche Brinkerhoff. Nice to meet you. Blanche, Louise Means on the phone. Tell her I'll call her back. 
Hey, uh, I was just walking around meeting the neighbors, and uh, I was wondering, do you know those people across the street, that house with the satellite dish? That's Bishop Harrison's. Yeah, I knocked on the door, but nobody answered. They're out of town for a few weeks. Really, I see. Um, hey, you wouldn't happen to have a, a ladder and some power tools, would you? Julie, let's go. Lights out. But I still have homework. Which you wouldn't have if you hadn't been on the phone for two hours. Well, if I still lived in California, I could see my friends all the time and wouldn't have to worry about making time for phone calls. And making time in the morning to get up earlier to do your homework because now it's time for you to go to bed. Good night. I hate this place. You know, I've been thinking we really need to make an effort and reach out. Really? I was thinking more along the lines of a padded room with a big lock, and the only contact we have with her is to slide food through this tiny little slot. What? <laughs> I'm talking about dealing with your sister and her attitude. Yeah, I was talking about the Cheesemans and they're not being members of the church. What do you mean? Well, I've been thinking, you know, I know what it feels like to be in the religious minority. You remember when I was a senior? My dad moves us down to the south. There I am, suddenly the only Mormon in a high school filled with born-again Christians. I mean, I was voted most likely to burn in hell. <laughs> yeah, well, I think dealing with your sister comes in close second to eternal damnation. Didn't I get you that Dr. Phil book on dealing with teenagers? Did you lose an ultimate? Can stupid things women do mess up their lives? Seriously, honey. I know she's your sister, and I love her, I do, but something has to be done. Okay, all right. I'll, um, I'll talk to her. I'll, I promise. I'll, a little tough love. <laughs> you will? Sure. Okay, yeah. thanks. And about the Cheesemans, um, why don't I call Linda tomorrow and see if they want to come over for dinner? Yes, yes. Good, that would be nice. Thank you. I just... I don't know, I feel like I gotta do something. You know, with the bishop gone, I gotta step it up a notch. Yeah, don't worry about it. You're doing a great job. Don't stress, the Cheesemans will fit in just fine. How you doing? Oh, that's my paper. Oh, yeah. There you go. You live here? Yeah. yeah. We're neighbors. Right over there. That house. Yeah, well, uh, my, my wife and I were thinking about coming over tonight or sometime. Or, do you mind? Uh, what? Oh, yeah, sure. That blonde girl I seen walking around, that's your wife? Nice. <laughs> hey, you got one like that? Who needs 12? <laughs> Ugh. This coffee is awful. Really? What do you mean, really? You think I'm lying to you? No, uh, I believe you. No, no, you don't. You're questioning me. It wasn't a question. It was a question. If there was a, a stenographer here writing down our little uh, jovial repartee here, she would have typed, really, with a question mark. And believe me, these broads are good. I've had a lot of stuff read back to me that I said that I didn't remember saying. I meant I was surprised that it was bad. How could you not? Don't you, don't you drink it? Nah, I don't drink coffee. Let me guess. You're Mormon. You know what? Maybe that's why Mormons don't drink it, because no one knows how to make a good cup. You know what? Just give me the paper and a pick six. Uh, pick six of what? Numbers. Winners. You've got to be kidding me. If that's not making a good cup of coffee, you ain't got no lottery either. They've got no horse track. They've got no lottery. they got nothing up here. How far away did that fence say Vegas was? I don't know, but don't go talking about Vegas to these people. They're the good church-going type. Hey, that's another thing. I'll go in there. I'll eat their crappy white bread food. But I ain't holding hands and I ain't singing no kumbaya. Take those off. These people were nice enough to invite us to dinner. You're going to be pleasant. Yeah, I'm just saying, they bring out the Bible Pictionary, 
gone. Why, that's a perfect game for you. No words, all pictures. <laughs> that's very funny. Let me tell you no, something. Let me tell no, you I'm going to tell you something first. I, I know you think I'm stupid. Hi. <clears throat> kids are already started. Everybody, this is uh, the Cheeseman family. Uh, uh, George, Linda, their son, Rick, Keffy, Laura, a couple of friends of ours. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Uh, of course, you remember Kate. Hi. So glad you could make it. And uh, several of the children here. Yeah, we've got a few more running around here someplace. Shocker. Hey, uh, we brought you something? Oh, thanks. You shouldn't have, really. That's... Uh, no, we wanted to. It's not booze or nothing. Uh, <laughs> you hoo You shake it. Good, right? Yeah. So, George, uh, what did you do in Omaha before the move? I was in waste management. Then uh, that's what brought you out here? In a manner of speaking, yeah. How about you, big guy? What's your story? How's that? Well, I just haven't seen any black people in Utah. Would you get lost on your way somewhere else? No, I'm not black. I'm Tongan. Oh, well. You know, I don't keep up with the whole politically correct thing, you know? I mean, first, you're the Negroes. Then, you're the blacks. Now, you're the African Americans. Now, you're the Tongans. I don't think it's as catchy, but whatever. No, I mean, I'm from Tonga. It's an island in the South Pacific. Oh, like Survivor. I love that show. I bet it's very clean there. Well, that's why we moved here, for my husband's health. The air is better. Yeah, there's no cigarette smoke. So, let me ask you, is that like the body is a temple sort of a thing? What, what's that? The no smoking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a health code that uh, church practices. I'll tell you something about your health code. I have seen some of the biggest, chunkiest people I have ever seen in my life waddling around Utah. That was a rude thing to say. It's not rude. It's just uh, it's the truth. I, 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 mean, I mean, you're giving up the smokes. You're giving up the booze. Maybe you people should think about giving up the baked goods. Chungaloons over here. Maybe we should have made the fruit salad. No, no. Oh, I, I don't mean you two. Two of you are fine. 50, 100 pounds overweight. That's not a big deal. I am talking about fat people. People where you see him walk down the street and you go, fat guy. Look at this guy. He is a fat guy. I seen this guy on Jerry Springer. 1,700 pounds. I mean, what does he do for Halloween? What? Throws a white sheet over his head and goes as one of the Alps? <laughs> And this is Michael Bishop Harrison, a few years ago when we first moved in. <laughs> so, so let me ask you, Tews, are you like what, assistant ministers? Well, uh, we were what you call uh, counselors to the bishop. Like the consigliere. And, but uh, we also have full-time jobs, too. Uh, our work at the church is voluntary. That's right. That's right. Speaking of which, uh, George, I know you don't have anything lined up just yet. I mean, I could uh, go into work tomorrow and talk to my manager about you if, you, if you'd like. Oh, that'd be great. Thank you. This is so nice. Look at all this you got here. You even saved your kid's hospital ID tag from when they was born. <laughs> you know what? Um, if you're interested, there are a ton of scrapbooking stores around here. It's really popular. The stores where people come to save their junk? Oh, yeah, they really do very well. Besides, it's not junk. It's preserving memories. Preserving memories? What memories are you going to preserve? What, old cocktail napkins with guys' phone numbers on them? Okay, who wants dessert? Hey, uh... Sorry about my dad, he's kind of got a big mouth. <laughs> what? He's hysterical. My family is so boring with their domestic tranquility lifestyle. I don't know, he really seems like a cool guy. Yeah, whatever. He was my last resort. I was living in California before my parents moved to the Philippines. My dad had to become a mission president over there. So jacked up. I didn't want to go, so I had to come here. You said your dad was a mission president, what's that? You know those young guys that come to your door wanting to talk about the Mormon church, Mormon missionaries? Yeah. Well, the mission president is the really old guy in charge of all those young guys. You know what I always thought would be cool? To give the Mormons the Jehovah's Witnesses addresses and the Jehovah's Witnesses the Mormons addresses. Have them show up and go out of each other. Like religion's version of the Bloods and the Crips. <laughs> do you ski? No, but I might got to do something if I don't want to die of boredom around here. At least now you have a satellite dish to entertain you. You saw that? You're secret safe with me. Hey. 
No boys in the room, you know the rules. That wasn't moms and dads. I didn't know that it played here, too. Same family, same rules. I'm sorry, sir. I didn't mean to disrespect. Well, you didn't know. It's okay. Listen, we've got Kate. Come on. I'm watching my weight. Well, come watch it downstairs with the rest of us. Let's go. So, Rick, have you thought about going out for any of the uh, sports teams over at the high school? Uh, no, probably not. Really? Because, you know, you seem like the kind of guy that uh, I think they could use over there. Yeah, like, uh, what kind of sports? Well, you know, the, the regular ones. Baseball, basketball, wrestling. Uh... Wrestling? You mean like, uh, you know, busting heads, fighting? <laughs> well, I mean, it's not like what you see on TV. No, no, no. Know. It's fighting. And the beauty is, it's sanctioned by the school. They let you do it. You beat the crap out of other kids, and then I don't have to get the angry phone calls at the end of the day from some PO'd vice principals. Your kid beat up this one, he beat up that, and we threatened this guy over here. No fuss, no muss. I don't have to get involved with you at all. I love it. Love it. But it's not really fighting. No, no, it's not fighting at all. Wink, wink, nod, nod. I get you. <laughs> Brother Teasman, oh, you read us a story. <laughs> oh, so you're a brother already. You know what, sweetheart? George is visiting with us. Let's leave him alone. Yeah, I, I can, uh, yeah, I can read a story to children. What is this, the three little pigs? Three little pigs? I don't need a book to read the three little pigs. <laughs> I know this story. All right, you ready to hear it? All right, once upon a time, there were three little pigs. Antonio, Giuseppe, and Fredo. Antonio, he lived in a straw house. Giuseppe lived in a stick house. And Fredo, nice brick house with the cobblestone driveway and the lights underneath that show the trees make it look nice at night, adds to the curb appeal. One day, Antonio, the one in the straw house, is sitting around, picking his teeth, watching television. Well, all of a sudden, here's a knock on the door. <laughs> It's a soft knock because the door's made of straw. And outside he hears, Big Bad Wolf, I'm here to collect my protection money. This is money that the wolf would charge the pigs every month or so uh, not to eat them. Protection money, and they'd give him money in an envelope. And you know what? Antonio was just sick of it. He doesn't want to pay the wolf no more. So Antonio says, Forget it! I'm not paying you anymore! Now this, of course, makes the wolf very irate. So he says, I am going to huff. I am going to puff, and I am going to blow your house down. <laughs> Antonio's very, very upset, and the wolf huffs, and he puffs, blows it down. Now, of course, Antonio, losing his little pig mind, running around screaming and yelling, his house is ruined. Of course, he had no insurance. So he runs over to his buddy Giuseppe's house. Boom, boom, boom. Giuseppe, let me in. The wolf just blew it down. My Giuseppe's like, he blew it down. Yes, he blew it down. Come on inside, sit down, have an espresso, relax. They're freaking out. Next thing you know, boom, boom, boom. Knock on the door. Who do you think it is? Big Bad Wolf. Exactly, the Big Bad Wolf. Giuseppe says, forget it. I'm not going to give you no money either. Now the wolf is like, all right. I'm a huff. I'm a puff. And I'm going to... Oh, your house down. There's sticks all over the street. People are slipping and falling. It looks like a John Woo film. It's crazy. <laughs> now these two pigs are out of their... Minds. They don't know what to do. So they run over to their buddy Fredo's house with the big brick house. Bum, 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 break it. The big man will blow down our house. Fredo says, all right, come on, come in. You gotta help him. He's gonna cut it. He's gonna eat us. Fredo's like, will you please have an espresso? Calm down, relax. I'll take care of it. Fredo is as cool as a cucumber. Walks over the phone. Boop, 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 boop. He dials uh, some associates and hangs up the phone. The next thing you know, Big black Cadillac limo pulls up in front of Fredo's brick house. Two Goomba pigs in dark suits get out. They walk over to the wolf. They say, excuse me, you the big bad wolf? He says, yeah, I am. They pick him up by his lapels, and they start banging him against the side of the house, cracking his brain against the wall. Then the pig reaches into his pocket, pulls out his 9 millimeter, puts it against the wolf's temple. Bada bing, they blow his brains all over his nice Ivy League suit. Boom! All the way down. Uh, <clears throat> George, uh, I think we're... Yeah, this is the best part right here. I think we're probably... Uh, this is the best part, trust me. Then Antonio and Giuseppe, they go, who? Ah, Fredo, who is that? And Fredo goes, ah, those guys? Those are my cousins, the guinea pigs. <laughs> guinea pigs! Never mind. The end. Yeah! yeah! Good kids. Good kids. Hey, tell you what, kids, here. 
Hey, go get yourself some ice cream on Brother Cheese. Oh, that's fine. Seriously. That's but nice. it's just ice cream. Yeah, that, yeah. Ah. I mean, they get an allowance. Uh, garbage and things. They ah, do. It's 30 bucks. It's no big deal. Well. It's early 20th century. Maybe you'll get two, three hundred dollars at auction. Stinking antiques roadshow. Getting everybody's hopes up like that. My Aunt Adeline, she's 87 years old. She's up in the attic on her hands and knees. She's looking for things to bring. Unbelievable. What about that other thing? Don't worry about that other thing. We're gonna find Carmine and we're gonna kill him. Kill him twice. His glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and ready to greet him when he comes again. We offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Excuse me, Father? Uh, not for nothing, but it's just the two of us, nobody else. There was an altar boy once, but he left for college. Came home from church, got changed, you went to the store. Did you get the guy to go? Excuse me, I'm trying to have a conversation here. Well, who? He's at a uh, 7.30s. If you'll just stand there, I'll do that. You know, we're not a big box here, I like to call it. Uh, more of a customized store, so you'll find 7.30s, 380s. The man I'm looking for. President Perry, good to see you. How are you? I'm, I'm fine, but my wife has me fixing a gate out back. I'm looking <laughs> for some specific hinges. Yes, yes, hinges. I can take care of that for you. Uh, let me introduce you to, to George here first. He just moved in a few weeks ago with his family. Sure, you <laughs> this is President Perry. He's uh, a stake president, we call that. He's uh, sort of the leader of many of the local congregations. Like, a pres like president of the Mormons? <laughs> yeah, something like that, yeah. Hey, <laughs> Craig, what, you want to be the Teamsters now? <laughs> what are you, the, the Mormon Jimmy Hoffa? Did I mention that George <laughs> is from Omaha? Oh, my sense of demission to Omaha. You know, I bet he knocked on your front door. Yeah, well, if he did, I didn't answer it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hoffa. The, the, the hinge aisle, uh, President, is just over in this area. I'll take care of this. So. Great. Nice to meet you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wife's got him working. Yeah, what? Can, uh, can I get this cut in half? Yeah. You don't got a saw at home? Uh. All right. You want it exactly in half? Preferably, as close as you can get, yeah. You have used one of these before, haven't you? Yeah, not to cut wood. startled me. I'm sorry. Just out for my morning stroll. Oh, and I couldn't help but notice when the postman put the uh, mail in, the postcard from your in-laws in the Philippines. Oh. It's nice to see things are going so well for them. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you know, normally I'm not one to pry into other people's private affairs. No, but of course not. Um, I thought you should know. The other night I was taking a walk and, um, you know, minding my own business, of course. Of course. And I thought I saw Julie through the window with the Cheeseman boy. And? And he's not a member of the church. Ah. Uh, Who knows what his values are. I, I mean, to encourage them to socialize, I mean, really. Uh, well, hmm. I thought that you and your husband, what with him being in a position of leadership, would want to set the standard for the community, you know? <sighs> You know what, Louise? We are setting a standard. 
We had the Cheesemans over for dinner that night. It's called friendshipping. You know what? You should try it sometime. I see. Mm. <laughs> I hope so. Patricia? Yeah, it's Louise. Well, end of your first big day. Oh, bringing home the bacon. You know, my old man used to say that success comes in a pair of overalls and works eight hours a day. Yeah, it just feels good. Do you feel that? Mm. It feels good, doesn't it? Just put that in there. Yeah. Right, I'll see you tomorrow. Eight hours a day, 40 hours a week. How do you people do it? Yes, I'm the owner, Francis Eastlack. Mrs. Eastlack, I'm Brigham Smith from Scrapbookers Local 327. From where? Scrapbookers 327. It's a local scrapbooking union. <laughs> but I didn't know scrapbookers had a union. Well, you're supposed to, ma'am. You're also supposed to pay your union dues. Union dues? Yes, ma'am. How many employees do you have? Six. Mm -hmm. Two full-time and four part-time. Four part-time. Well, as you know, it's $50 a month per person. That's for the full-timers. Now, the part-timers, we have to charge double dues because we find that they do exert a bigger suck on the pension and health program. So that's two workers at $50 a month, four at $100 a month. That's $500 a month you have to pay. I have to pay? Yes, ma'am. I thought employees paid for things like that. What kind of money do your employees make, ma'am? Minimum wage. And it looks like you're doing pretty well here. It's a beautiful store. Well, yes. That's but... why you're responsible. Now let's talk about back dues. Now, unfortunately, I'm not able to wipe out an entire 12-month period of back dues. However, what I can do is I can only go back three months. So that's this month plus three months of back dues. That would be $2,000 that you have to pay. That's a lot of money. Is it, Mrs. Eastlick? Is it really? And don't you think it's in everyone's best interest? I mean, you wouldn't want to strike now, would you? Strike? Oh, yes, ma'am. Your employees parading up and down that beautiful sidewalk outside, carrying large signs and screaming about how unfairly they're being treated. We are very fair. Exactly. That's why you have to pay the $2,000. <sighs> well, would you take a check? Do you have a driver's license and a major credit card? Hi. What can I get you? Hi, yeah. Could I get a pound of your gap of gold? I'm sorry? Gap of gold. Produce section is back there. It's not produce. It's ham. We have boiled ham. I don't want boiled ham. I want gap of gold ham. Hey, uh, do we have any, uh, cappuccino ham? Gap of gold! Yeah, that. It's a ham? We have boiled ham. I don't want boiled ham. I want gap... <sighs> Never mind. Oh, great. <laughs> More brand. What is this, detergent? What happened to the Pop-Tarts? Okay. Kate. Linda, hi, are you okay? No, hi, no, it's nothing, I'm fine. <laughs> oh, honey, honey, what is it? It's just the back home, I had my friends, my family out here, I got nothing, not even good meat. Oh, sweetie, but you've got a wonderful husband and son. Uh, my husband? He's more like that college roommate where you couldn't wait for the end of the semester so that everybody could move out. Except with him, I ain't never graduating. Oh, <laughs> hey. Thank you. Oh. Bill, you people are so nice. This 
such a good feeling about you. Hmm. Look, Linda, would you like to come to church with us on Sunday? Yes. I mean, just come out and meet a few more people that live around here. You could make new friends. Yeah, he hit some kid, uh huh? For what? It's wrestling. Yeah, I know it's not fighting. Wink, wink, nod, nod. I get that, all right? What? What do you mean, no, I don't? You calling me stupid? Huh? You know, I may drive a minivan, pal. It's short, but it ain't yellow. Who was that? The high school vice principal. What's his problem? Yeah, he's upset that he's only number two. You know, Buzz Aldrin never got over it either. Oh, when your, uh, your kid hit some other kid, I don't know. What? Yeah, it was wrestling tryouts. Oh, did he make the team? I get the update from him when he gets home. Well, just so you know, Michael and Kate James invited us to go to church with them this Sunday. What? I don't go to my own church. I'm gonna go to somebody else's? It's not like we're gonna convert. This is a whole different world out here. I would like to get to know these people, and I am sure that they are just as curious about who we are. Who are you talking about? Our neighbors or the extraterrestrials? Carmine's in Delhi Pasquale. This Sunday, you are gonna get dressed. Your son is gonna get dressed. And we are gonna go to church like a normal, happy family! Fine. I'll pass. Yet another fun weekend for me here in Happy Valley. Just come on. There was four of us. Kobe Luwak? Oh, hey. Yeah, it's, uh, it's this real special coffee my dad likes. He wanted me to order it for him. He's a freak about this stuff. You know, he grinds his own coffee beans himself. Wow. Yeah. Hey, uh, what happened to you yesterday? Yeah, Kate told me. You guys actually came to church? Uh-huh. I faked a massive stomach ache. Sorry you had to suffer through it. No, uh, everyone was real nice. I kind of liked it. You're kidding me. No, it was cool. In fact, uh, your brother asked me to go with him on this big paintball thing him and the guys from the church are having up in the mountains this weekend. I'm gonna go. Great. Let's go, guys! Manja! my package? Yeah, it came today. And this is the first time hearing about it? Come on. What, are you that desperate for a coffee fix? Pineapple? Pineapple? Who puts pineapple on a pizza? Canadian bacon and pineapple. It's very popular around here. Folks said to try it. You don't put pineapple on a pizza. It's like putting pepperoni in a fruit cocktail. It's something you don't do. I wanted to try something new. I thought we were supposed to have Medagon. I needed something easy. I'm going out tonight. There's a women's night at the church. What church? The Mormon church. Again with the Mormon church? You were just there on Sunday. So? There's something tonight. Kate invited me. Fruit on pizza. What, well, you're gonna be a uh, converted Mormon now? No, but now I have friends. It's nice to socialize. With them? With June Cleaver? It's Nick at night with these people. And what's wrong with that? They have values. Hey, 
Take those off. Hey, leave the kid alone, will you please? I think it would be nice if we could have some dinner conversation every once He's in a while. He's got nothing to say. If he had something to say, he would say it. You got something to say? But nothing. Some of the guys from the Mormon church are having this big paintball thing in the mountains this weekend. Kids your age? It's all the guys. It's some father and sons. Julie's brother Michael asked if we wanted to go. You have got to be kidding me. You want to go running around in the mountains playing hide-and-seek with a bunch of Mormons? What's the matter with you? I think it would be nice the two of you getting together and doing something fun like that. Why do I want to go out? I got a house. It's freezing cold outside. I'm not... Plus, that's what happened with the Donner Party, them people. They, they froze. They ended up putting themselves on their own pizza. You know what? This is... I'm out of here. Forget it. Where are you going? I'm going to go get something to eat somewhere else and not in the woods. Let me get this straight. What you're telling me is you are the largest wholesale distributor of scrapbook and materials in the entire state of Utah? And most of Idaho. No kidding. <laughs> now, where did you say you're from again? Save all members of the children. And what is that? Well, you heard Save the Children. Of course. Well, yeah. we save all the memories. See, what our organization does, in a nutshell, is we raise money for underprivileged children all around the globe so that they can keep a scrapbook. These little tykes, they're going to grow up. They're going to become doctors and lawyers and such. And with these scrapbooks, they're going to be able to refer back and see how far they come. That's very considerate. I agree. I mean, how else are we going to know about these kids? You've seen them. It's truly sad with the bloated bellies and the flies flying around them. How are we going to know about them if there ain't someone there at the minute taking pictures while the flies are buzzing? We'd be more than happy to donate some scrapbooking materials. Oh, I appreciate that. I really do. Thank you. You already got us a government contract to purchase the scrapbooking supplies. All we're looking for, quite frankly, and there ain't no way to sugarcoat it, is financial donation. It's for the children. Yeah, Salt Lake City to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. This Friday. You got something in the morning? I'll take that. First class. One seat. And, uh, no. One way. Yes. You know, Rick, after dinner, we'll, uh, head out and check out the paintballing equipment if you'd like. Hey, thanks. And, you know, thanks for letting me stay for dinner, too. Oh, it's our pleasure. Um, but shouldn't you call your parents and make sure that they know you're here? Oh, no. That's fine. They got into another fight anyways. Yeah, Dad took off and Mom, she drank a whole bottle of white Zinfandel and she's face down, you know, wasted. So this works out fine. Yeah. So you've uh, ever actually uh, played paintball before, Rick? Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Really? Not everyone's Rambo. Some people lead civilized lives indoors. Uh-huh. It's a shame about your dad couldn't make it with us. Uh, he told me about his doctor's appointment. He told you he had a doctor's appointment? Yeah, that's why he won't be coming paintballing with us. Well, you know, I thought this was going to stay in the family, but I guess we can confide in you guys. What? What's wrong? Well, Dad, uh, Dad's got to get a colonoscopy. Ooh, wow. What's a colonoscopy? Look it up on the internet. No, 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 no. Um, it's it's just a doctor's appointment, honey. Look, Rick, I don't want you to, to worry about it. It's probably nothing, really. You know, I had an uncle. He had a colonoscopy. Turns out it was a buffalo head nickel that he'd swallowed when he was two years old. <laughs> they got it back, too. Mint condition. I think tripled in value. Well, there really isn't a paintballing merit badge yet, but some of us are working on it. Um, I like to use this space here to sort of practice. We'll set up some targets and whatnot. Have you ever actually uh, shot a gun before, Rick? Well, uh... Well, it's pretty easy. It just uh, it was the rifleman approach. You know, Chuck Connors, keen haw, keen haw. I like that one. Some prefer sort of the delicate Princess Leia sort of a feel, you know what I mean? <laughs> You're right, that is pretty cool. Look at that, yeah. That's good. Actually, he was thinking of having that painted sometime soon, so... You know, I'll put up some targets to shoot at. How about that? Hey, uh, it's pretty fun. Oh, ah! Ah! Julie. Yeah, you're right. 
Kita oser. Iya. Hey. Hey. What's your problem? You've been acting weird all day. My problem is when my friends come over and spend the whole night hanging out with my brother. So you was hanging out too. My idea of a good time is not to hang out with my brother. I had a good time. If your idea of a good time is to hang out with my brother, then you've got problems. Uh, I thought you said you was the one with the problem. I did. Shh. I did. Look, my brother is a complete dork, and his wife is this little homemaking Nazi. Your brother and his wife are good people, and not for nothing, but probably your mom and dad too. And you want nothing to do with him? You don't know how good you got it. That's another problem you've got. Technically, that's just an extension to the first problem. Shh. Well, then you got one really big problem. All right, I'm going to lunch. Hello. George, it's Special Agent Tuttle. Ugh. Hey, how you doing? Look, I'm in a bit. In a bit. I'm looking at it. I'm, 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 we need to talk. Oh, come on, I just, I just started my lunch hour. It's perfect. Let's go. Is your car out front? All right, fine. Fine, I did the scrapbooking thing, all right? Big deal. You're doing scrapbooking? See, that is so cool. This whole going straight thing has really worked out well for you. It's opened up a whole new myriad of hobbies and interests. You know, when my wife and I got married, we started scrapbooking. And then we actually took the scrapbooking and combined it with the genealogy. We made these books and we... La, 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 la. No, see this? This is my don't care face, all right? Now, we're not here for the scrapbooking thing? What are you doing here, then? All right. Last week, agents in Atlantic City called a Rocky Del Furio on a calling card scam. You know him? Yeah, he's like, uh... He's an old time with Gagliano's crew, right? Right. Well, he wanted to cut a deal in exchange for some information. <laughs> Everybody's a stool pigeon. Well, he actually had a lot to offer, George. He led investigators to an area of the Pine Barrens. There was an old farm there. There was an old well. It had been dried up for years, but there was a concrete slab placed over the top of it. It was at the bottom of the well. They found the remains of your father. I'm so sorry, George. I guess at the time, your father was involved in some importing operation. There was a guy named Jimmy Iannucci tried to muscle in. Your father and Iannucci had some words over it, one thing led to another. Now, Iannucci's been doing a 12 to 15 on another rap down in Tallahassee. He's up for parole in six months, but he's not going anywhere now except to be extradited back to Jersey. The, uh, the office sent me all of your father's personal effects to give you. There's a uh, gold necklace with a gold crucifix, a gold ring, a gold chain with a squiggly thing, uh, money clip, no money, gold though, a uh, gold watch, gold bracelets, something else gold. I don't know what that is. Your father's billfold with driver's license and credit cards. And um, a travel brochure to Disneyland. With three plane tickets to Los Angeles. At that doctor's appointment this weekend, huh? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm sure it's nothing to worry about, really. Rick, he told me everything. He's concerned. What are you talking about? Look, I know it's a sensitive subject, and I just want you to know that uh, I can feel for you. I had an uncle who had a colonoscopy, too. So? Look, I want you to know that if anything unusual should come up, that we are here for you. Uh, look, I'm not having a colonoscopy. You're not? No. You know, George, you're, you're over 40. I mean, this is the time in your we life. We are not having this discussion. You know, ignoring the situation isn't going to make it, actually. Yeah, 
You know what? I'm sure your doctor has it. Uh, you know what? I lied. I made it up. I'm not, I, I got no doctor's appointment, no colonoscopy, nothing. I made it up so I wouldn't have to go out with you and your freaky friends into the woods to play Army Patrol. Happy? Okay. You know, Rick is really excited to go out that, on that. Let me ask you a question. Why do you care about me and my family, huh? What is your, no, you get me this job, you bring me uh, to church, you invite us over to dinner, and now you're inviting me out into the woods with all your little friends. What, you need more converts? There aren't enough no. Mormons in this state? No. no, George, it's not anything like that at all, really. I just, I consider you a friend. <laughs> I, I want you to feel like you're part of our community. That's oh, no, I do. I do. Every time we go walking down the street, people are closing their drapes when they see us coming. Uh, I feel see, a part of your community. That's, that's you know, that, there's a saying about Mormons by Mormons, and it says that the church is true. Uh, the people aren't, necessarily. And what does that mean? Just that there are some Mormons who aren't very good at being Mormons. Oh. Oh, but I suppose you think you're great at it. No, I, George, I, I don't think anything about myself. I'm sorry. I just, I, I just happen to think that you're a great guy. I think you have a great family. And I want you to feel happy here. That's all. The guy at the store said I should uh, test drive this thing before this weekend. So you're going? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got right. you one, too. Give it a shot. Oh, all right. All right, there's a safety on it right there. Right here. Right, push that button. All right, got it. Show me what you got. Let's go. Go. What's all this? You look like Darth Vader and G.I. Joe had a kid. <laughs> Hey, Dad's going paintballing, too. Really? That's good to hear. <laughs> you know what? It's going to be cold this weekend. You know how to start a fire? I said a few. <laughs> you know what? Just be safe. Uh, get that thermos and fill it up with gas. Okay. Hey, how you doing? Oh, hey. We're the missionaries from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Got it. Great. Hey, who were those people you were talking to before? Oh, that was the Mormon missionaries. Are you kidding me? Who are they preaching to around here? Everyone's already Mormon. We're not. So now they're going to be coming around here, talking to us all no, the time? No, no, I took care of it. I told them this wasn't where I lived. I gave them another address to someplace else, and I told them they should stop by. <laughs> I love it. Okay, guys, okay, guys, listen up. You guys got your teams, you know the rules. First team to get the other team's flag and brings it back to home base wins. Let's move. All right, let's go. Blue team, go blue. Hey, I gotta go to the bathroom before we get started. All right, I'll take care of it. All right, well, where'd you put it? Are you kidding me? It's pretty much anywhere you want. I mean, as long as it's far enough away from camp. <laughs> no, no, you're not hearing me. It's morning time. I gotta go to the bathroom. Anywhere you want, just keep it away from camp. I got a fire in the hall here. All right, they're your woods.
want, wherever I want. I want four walls, a newspaper, and my toilet seat that plays that's amore when I sit on it. That's what I want. Ah, oh, who clipped you guys? I don't know. It was all a blur. Never even heard it coming. You must have seen it. This act does not go unpunished. Give me a name. Give me the name! I, I, I'm, I, I'm hazy. Give me the name. Robbie. You're a good kid. Let's go. <laughs> Why are you crying, kid? Because I want to keep playing. What's your name? Robbie. Robbie, huh? Well, if I wanted to shoot you, Robbie, you'd be dead already, right? <laughs> it's a nice gun you got. What is this? Granola. Granola? You're a kid! You should be eating candy and popcorn and crap. I like it, though. I like the granola. I tell you what I'm gonna do, Robbie. I'm not gonna shoot you. But you're gonna tell us where your home base is so that we can capture your flag and win the game. It's on the other side of the hill. Don't lie to me, kid! I'm not lying. I got a sixth sense that tells me when people are lying, especially little kids. Now I'm gonna ask you one more time. Where is your home base? I'm not lying. All right, fine. I'm gonna shoot you right now. Your day's okay. gonna be over. It's on the other side of the stream. Down by the cliffs. Okay, good. Don't be a stool pigeon. Oh man, now I can't keep playing. Yes, that's the point. But I didn't shoot you, did I? Let's go. Hey, what should I do with this? Leave the gun. Take the granola. Punk. Did you have fun? Yeah, yeah, I did. It was great. It was fun, huh? You see me back there drinking my coffee so that the Mormons wouldn't see me breaking their rules? Yeah, that's not all you was doing back there, huh? <laughs> did you see that kid? Comes around the, the, the big boulder and sees me squatting there. You see the look on his face? I love it. You know what? I got a good idea. Why don't we go home, get cleaned up, take your mom out to dinner? Yeah, where? Oh, you know where I wish we could go? Naples, Route 45, get a big Panzerati. Oh, oh baked or fried? Who are you talking to? Deep fried. Remember? Ugh. But you know what? I bet nobody's got no Naples, and nobody knows nothing Ugh. about no Panzerati. Isn't that a sports car? No, that's a Maserati. I said Panzerati. It's like, picture this. You take a pizza, you fold it over, you turn the meat and the cheese inside, you deep fry it, done. Oh, you mean a calzone? No. No, look at me. Does it not look like I know the difference between a Panzerati and a Calzone, huh? Uh, maybe I don't know the difference. Bingo, Nathan. I'll tell you what, today is your lucky day. You're gonna learn something. Get me an apron and I will show you how to make a Panzerati. Now, I'm gonna show you this once, so pay attention, all right? All right, first thing you do, you turn the dough into crust. Roll it out nice, make a nice ball, nice thin crust, that's the key. Throw in your red sauce. Around the edge, not too much. Then you throw in your sausage, your pepperoni, then your, uh, what is this? Pineapple. Look out. <clears throat> now it's garbage. All right. You fold it over. You make your seam. Then you throw it in the deep fryer over here, nice and brown. Like that, right? Then you stuff it in your face. Yeah, and so Mike is covered in paint, and we end up finding the kid that doesn't. Dad gets him to tell us where his base is. No loyalty to this kid. Total stool pigeons. <laughs> I just want to keep playing the game. He told us everything. Yeah, see, I would have blasted him right off the bat. See, that's what's the problem with the kids today. It's all about the violence. Be smart. True coercion is an art form. It all starts up here. So we find the flag. We grab it and just start booking it for camp. Well, I'm glad you two's had a good time. 
We did, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was thinking, maybe um, spring comes, it gets a little warm up there in the woods. Three of us would go do the, like a camping weekend. For real. <laughs> I don't think so. What? You do go. I have a house. Why do I want to go outside? Uh, very funny. Oh, I tell you, we'll start out slow. We'll finish up dinner, we'll go home, we'll open a couple windows, and uh, we can snuggle up in the same sleeping bag. Hey, uh, too much information, people. I'm mm. heading to the bathroom. Kind of like uh, Dad in the woods. We're not going there. You already did. Mmm, mmm, Maron, this is so good. My compliments to the chef. <laughs> what do you think of this? Tomorrow, get all dressed up, and then uh, three of us, we go to church together like a family. Not for nothing, but what's gotten into you, George Cheeseman? I don't know. It's for me to know and for you to find out. <laughs> Give to your people the joy of continual health and mind and body with the prayers of the Virgin Mary to help us. Guide us through the sorrows of this life to eternal happiness and the life to come. Remember how I told you it's a high-tech world and we gotta get an IT guy? The Jamuk who every time I got a problem with my computer tells me to turn it off and on again. So what? I get to think. That special coffee Carmine always says he can't live without. Mm -hmm. I get the computer geek to go on the uh, internet and do some research. There's a half dozen or so home addresses in the U.S. for somebody ordering that special coffee. But there's only one out west just started ordering the same time Carmine goes into hiding. I want you to handle this personally. Already bought the plane tickets. I'm going. And I'm bringing Rocco Mancuso with me. This time tomorrow, Carmine Pasquale will be a dead man. It's pretty good. I think they call it fry sauce. It tastes like ketchup and mayonnaise. Mm. Don't you want to diet? I'm working on it. Oh, look at this. Look at this. What do we got here? What? Over here. It's a van. Oh, it's the wife. Look at this. She must work out. Look at this, the groceries, a nice happy family, mm -hmm. here, right? <laughs> Not full help. <laughs> Hi, babe. Hey. Do so you need some help? Yeah. There he is. That's him. That ref fink Carmine Pasquale. Come on, let's go. What are you, nuts? You're... It's little Nicky. You got everything? Call the fence! Genius. He's just disappeared. All these houses look alike to me. Well, how can we lose it? Right there. Quick, quick. Make a right. Rest assured, you truly were our last resort. Okay? George, hey, good hey. morning. Good to see you. I reckon you look coming. No, that I saw. Oh, really? Uh, Are you yeah. okay? You seem a little rushed. I'm fine. Listen, you have a, like a book a basement? A, a basement? No, no, we have Sunday school, however, huh. starting with that. Listen, we also have a church social next week. This is a Mormon church. Yeah? So what? It's supposed to be some kind of cult. What are you talking about, cult? They could put a curse on us or something. You come on! brother and visiting with us today uh yeah 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 oh, sure well, good not? good good come on come here. 
Here's our Sunday school class. I'd like to welcome everybody out to Sunday school today. Do we have any visitors with us? I believe we've seen you here before, but would you mind standing up and uh, introducing yourself again? I don't want to. Come on, it's easy. It's the thing we do. I'm uh, George Cheeseman. <laughs> George Cheeseman? Thank you, George. And you two brethren back there, I don't believe we've met you before. Go on, please introduce yourselves. Yeah, um, my name is uh, Robert De Niro. Paco Mancuso, pleased to meet you. Nice to have you. Why didn't you use a made up name? Who took mine? Okay, let's all turn to John chapter 8. Uh, you know what? I left my uh, Bible in my other uh, church. Uh, me too. Come on, open the door. Hurry up. Just give me the keys. I don't got the keys. You throw. Oh, there they are. Where? They're in the car. We got you now, you rat fink. Come on, Pasquale, you're a dead man. Hey, look, at the missionaries. Hi, elders. FBI, freeze. They know where we are now. George, relax. We've got both of them in custody, and they're actually willing to make a deal. You see this? You can't trust nobody no more. But it's perfect, because right now we're spitting a story saying that the two of them actually got picked up before they even got to you, and that you're completely unaware of all of this. And if Angelo thinks he's failed, he's going to send somebody else, and that we can use as leverage. Uh, of course he's going to send somebody else. And what happens when that somebody else gets here? We are dead. George, we're going to protect you. <laughs> right. Trust me. All right, you got this uh, Mormon family, Catholic family, living next door to each other, right? So, uh, each family has a little four-year-old kid. One of them's a boy, one of them's a girl. It's summertime, the kids are out playing around, they turn on the sprinkler, the kids are young, they figure, ah, we'll strip down to our birthday suits, right? They're running around, all of a sudden the little boy looks at the little girl and goes, oh, look, there really is a difference between Mormons and Catholics. <laughs> All right, I guess I got one more thing. What are you gonna do? Hey, uh, uh Folks, if I could have your attention. Now, I know you don't uh, drink or smoke or have fun. <laughs> of course, I'm kidding. Uh, but I would like to uh, raise a toast with my caffeine-free Diet Pepsi, share with you an old Italian toast. It goes something like this. Che trova un amico, trova un tesoro. Which means he who finds a friend finds a treasure. Chindan. Put your cups down. That's not appropriate. For heaven's sakes, it's the appearance of evil. Well, uh, thanks for having us, guys. This is great. Oh, you're leaving? Yep, we gotta go. Saturday night mass. Don't you want to stay for dessert? I left the ricotta pie on the table over there. Enjoy. Oh, thanks for coming. Listen, about the other day, do you think we could talk later? Um... Yeah, sure. Okay. See. Good to have you. Yeah, thanks. You guys take care, all right? Yeah, sure. Come <laughs> 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 <Someone> in Rome. <laughs> yeah. See you, Rick. Thanks for coming. That was nice. Yeah. 
Aside from the food, that was great fun. You know, I've never heard a toast at a church dinner before. <laughs> that was a first. Well, George is a good guy. Yeah, they're good people. According to a spokesman for the FBI, notorious mob figure Carmine the Beans Pasquale and his family, known to neighbors as George, Linda, and Patrick Cheeseman, were in the witness protection program for just over a month when this apparent mob retaliation took place. Investigators say... It's all over the news. Hello. President Perry. Christina, I knew there was something suspicious about those people. What if that explosion had happened when any of us were nearby? It could have been a tragedy. Brothers and sisters, I bring you condolences for this incredible tragedy. You knew this family in their effort to get a second start in life, and I understand many of you here embraced them, as you should, as neighbors. Now I have other news. With Bishop Harrison's recent loss, he and his family have decided to permanently relocate back east to assist with his parents' farm. We therefore need to release Bishop John Clayton Harrison as Bishop of the Mountain View Ward, with Michael Isaac James as First Counselor, and Kepi Vakasiwola Vihani as Second Counselor. All those who can offer a vote of thanks for their service, please join me in doing so. Would the following individual please stand as I read his name as we ask for your vote? As the Bishop of the Mountain View Ward, Michael Isaac James. All those who can accept Michael James as your bishop, please indicate. No, I don't think so, pal. You don't... Yet! George, we're trying to keep a low profile here, okay? The guy's telling me I gotta pay for my meals and coach. What is that? George. And then he tells me he looks like I'm going to a Barry Manilow concert. George, you're in disguise. We're trying to keep you low key here, okay? You, you now, know, you could have done a little bit better about these get ups. Temporary. Your plane leaves in 15 minutes. Okay. Now, I want you guys to be assured Angelo Marcello officially thinks you're dead. I wish I was dead with these kind of clothes. You guys have no imagination. Are you sure nobody suspects a thing? No. Everybody has bought this, including your neighbors. We've kept a pretty tight beat on the community and what people are saying. And actually, as a side note, you might be interested to know your friend Mike James was actually called to be the new bishop today. Really? Well, not for nothing, but <laughs> he's good people. I can see why. Well, apparently not everybody can. What do you mean? You see, in the Mormon church, when anybody is called to any position, everybody else in the congregation has to vote on it. Now, 999 times out of 1,000, everybody votes in the affirmative. And what happens on the thousandth time? Once in a while, people will vote against it. So, so what? Somebody didn't want to vote for Mike? Actually, about half the congregation. What? I got to admit, it's almost unheard of. How could anyone have anything bad to say about Mike? We're here tonight for you to voice your concerns. I've asked Brother James not to attend so as to allow everyone to speak freely. I've known Michael James for years. We're not going to find anyone with more dedication. You know, I think I speak for a lot of people here when I say he may mean well, but at what expense? What if it had been one of us that was killed because Michael James invited a mobster to wander the halls of our church? But he didn't know. The federal government sent them here. And there should be a law against that. Or at least some sort of law notifying us that these people are moving in. It's the Witness Protection Program. If we know they're here, they're not protected. Then who is going to protect us? That mobster thug scared my son half to death and ate his granola. Exactly. Michael James invited a wolf into our little flock of sheep. Yeah, oh, Mike. You're the one who always wants to play. You always keep your own. Can I uh, say something here?
Thank you. Um, but we're not dead. <laughs> that uh, little magic show you saw yesterday was courtesy of the FBI. They did it to trick some people I used to know. And we're moving away from here now. But the feds also have big ears, and I heard about what was going down here today with, uh, with Mike James and um, what some of you think about him. That you believe he's responsible for bringing in a wolf amongst your sheep. And my life these days has been all about uh, saving my own skin and looking out for number one. Actually, uh, my whole life's been that way. But I figured when I heard about this sit-down today, it's a good opportunity for me to finally stand up for someone who uh, done right by me. Somebody like Mike. So, uh, just relax. I just wrote down some notes. You know, I, I heard one time that the Mormon church is true, but the people ain't. Now, I, I don't know if the Mormon God is the one true God. I'm not a praying man. I have heard many people say their prayers. But I can't tell you this. If there is one ounce of truth in the Mormon church, and I relied on the people in this room to find out about it, I'd never know. Some of the people in this room wouldn't even give me and my family the time of day. That aside, you do have one good thing going for you. Michael James. That guy cared more about me and my family than I did. And he showed me what's, uh, what's really important in life. And if he can do that with a guy like me, imagine what he could do with people like you. So I don't know if it uh, counts. But Mike James has my vote. You need an engraved invitation? I smell dinner. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> so, uh, the feds have their undercover guy. He's worked in with Angelo's crew. He spreads it to them that what went down was real. Angelo believes we're dead. So did everyone else. It had to be that way. But when we heard about what happened... I had to come back and uh, say my piece. So, any idea where you're heading now? None. Just as long as they don't put pineapple on their pizza, I'm fine. <laughs> and good coffee. I don't know. Coffee almost got me killed this time around. I'm thinking maybe there's something to this whole Mormon health code thing. Oh, right. President, hi. Hi, I wanted to come by and tell you. What? Congratulations, Bishop. <laughs> everybody sustained me? No. But I never said everybody had to sustain you. All I wanted to know was why they didn't. But you're where you need to be right now, Bishop. The rest will come around. Look at you, the Mormon Jimmy Hoff over here! Although, you know what I would do if I were you? Just in case you ever disappear magically, leave a note saying for them to look for you under the goalposts at the BYU Stadium. <laughs> okay. He has no idea. <laughs> I don't know if you can have a ride or not, but if you can, here's the address to my parents' home in the Philippines. Your brother's kicking you out? <laughs> no. I decided I'm going to live with my parents. It's sort of trying to find a solution to my problems. I thought it was just one big problem. Then it might get a little smaller. Oh, let's go! Uh, I gotta go. Come on, get in! Hey, thanks for everything. Good luck with the baby. Thank you. All right, come on, get in. Good luck with everything. Be good, be safe. Hey, you take care of yourself. Oh, hey, one more thing. Mike, can you do me a favor? 
Yeah, sure. Let me can you deliver those for me, but uh, I need you to do it personally. What are they? Refund checks. <laughs> Thanks. Aloha, Bishop. See ya. Take it easy. Bye. Put a little cartoon bubble on the picture, like it's a comic strip. Oh, that's cute. So how long have you folks been open? My husband and I opened about a month ago. He's a great Six, All right, five is ten. Thank you very much. Come again. Come by. <laughs> Mormon missionaries. I tell you what, here, uh, it's on the house. Oh, Thank thanks. You. Where are you guys from? I'm both from Utah. Oh, really? You know, you look like you haven't had a decent meal in two years. How about, uh, come over to the house for dinner? You're not gonna hear any complaints from us. Yeah, and we're not gonna hear any messages either. We're just gonna eat. To start. Forget about it. I'm Elder Carpenter. This is Elder Martin. Hi. How you doing? I'm Donald Clayton. This is my, uh, son Jordan, my lovely wife, man. How's it going? Get me, man. I'm inviting Mormons over. On purpose. You can't. I'm not. I don't know what got into me. <laughs> yeah, give him, uh, give him our address, will you? And make it the correct one this time. So you like, you guys like Italian food? Love it. Great, we're having Chinese. Great. That's well, Tuesday, Tuesday's Chinese food Absolutely. at our house. She makes a great stir fry. My mom makes good stir fry. Not better than mine. No, she's the best. And what she does, she puts it in the, uh, what do you call that thing? The big metal, uh, the wok. And she actually shakes it with her whole body. It's like watching a Chinese noodle girl. Oh, it's nice, the food's delicious. Till the conflict is over Happy are we Happy are we Soldiers in the army There's a bright crowning store We shall win and wear it by and by Haste to the battle And quick to the field Truth is our helmet Our buckler and shield Stand by our colors and proudly they wave We're joyfully, joyfully marching to our home We are all enlisted till the conflict is over Happy are we, oh happy are we Soldiers in the army, there's a bright crown in store We shall win and wear it by and by Sounding loudly and clear Come join the ranks Oh, come join the ranks We are waiting now for soldiers who volunteer We shall gain the victory by and by Listen, our captain calls us today Lose not a moment and make no delay Happy are we, oh, happy are we. Soldiers in the army, there's a bright crown in store. We shall win and wear it by.